Nier was one of those games. I remember when it released, remember when it got decent reviews, and actually bought it once it got cheap enough for me to justify despite not knowing much about it. But I never played it. Not until recently, with the release of Nier Automata and the hordes of people telling me to play it. So when a fan bought Automata for me so I could review it, I knew it was time to finally knock this one out of my backlog. And wow, I wish I played it before now. Nier is about a man named... Uh, well, Nier, who wants to protect his daughter from a strange, incurable disease called the Black Scrawl. He's determined to save her, even if he has no idea how, but when he comes across a magical tome named Grimoire Vice, who seems to think it's possible, he journeys across a dying world to try and accomplish it. Nier is an action RPG with a focus on hack-and-slash combat in a somewhat open world, that kind of lots of large-ish areas stitched together kind of open world. In a lot of ways, the game's basic setup seems rather old school, harkening back to classic PS2 platformers and action games. It has that kind of pieced together open world structure, Nier can double jump for no particular reason, it shifts gameplay genres on a whim, it even treats buildings like you're suddenly in a side-scrolling game with pre-rendered backgrounds. It feels really dated, but in a weirdly refreshing way. What's better, that doesn't stop it from doing some seriously unique stuff on occasion. There are points where the game shifts into a top-down perspective and plays almost like a Diablo clone or a bullet hell game. There are sequences where it essentially turns into a side-scrolling action platformer. And probably my favorite twist on the gameplay was a sequence of dreams that are not only expressed entirely through text, but the characters in the game are actually aware of the text-based nature of their existence. The game essentially turns into a text adventure for a bit, while the characters show awareness of the narrator and try and figure out how to operate in a world with no visuals or feeling, only narration. It's a really great sequence, and I love how the game plays with perspective and genre like that. Nier's base gameplay isn't really flawed in its execution, so much as it can be a little simplistic and repetitive at times. It works well for what it is, and it's generally enjoyable to play, but it's also definitely one of those games where you find yourself running past a lot of enemies in the open world segments because you, you just don't want to deal with them. There's even a specific environment that the game makes you go through multiple times, and it's full of obstacles that make you go the long way through and present a bunch of battles, and I definitely was not down for that by my third time through the area. Overall, Nier's gameplay experience is a pretty solid and consistently enjoyable hack and slash with a variety of weapon types and customization options that allow for different play styles. It's just not particularly extraordinary, especially as time has passed. Nier takes place in the kind of post-apocalypse that I'm sure inspired games like Horizon Zero Dawn to some extent, a far future where modern humans don't remember what happened to end the world like it did, and signs of previous civilizations are all but entirely broken down, leaving the world mostly unrecognizable. But rather than a sci-fi twist, uh, well, okay, definitely with a sci-fi twist, but also magic. Magic diseases, magic books, magic monsters, magic spells. A bunch of strange, aggressive creatures called shadows are roaming the world, becoming both larger in number and bolder in approaching human settlements. Essentially, the world is dying, and no one really knows why. It's not an entirely original setting, but it's definitely a pretty unique mixture of established sci-fi and fantasy ideas, and it serves as a pretty interesting backdrop until you find out how it got this way, what the shadows are, and other things that I of course will not spoil here. Let's just say, as JRPGs go, it is both convoluted and legitimately compelling enough to be a credit to its genre. I do have to mention the music here as well, because Nier's soundtrack is gorgeous. Gorgeous in a way I don't often hear. It's ethereal and smooth, with beautiful vocals by Emmy Evans, and evokes a kind of sadness, even in the exciting or tense tracks. It's one of the highlights of the game, both in how it contributes to the atmosphere and tension, and just in its quality as a musical work. The game does some neat things with it too, like having different versions of the main village's theme depending on where you are, or even adding vocals as you approach the town musician, Devil. All in all, a fantastic soundtrack. The story hits a lot of familiar beats, collect these powerful things to do the thing, then halfway through a big event happens that answers and poses more questions and sets you on a new course to do a different thing to the finale. Thankfully, both the journey and the answers are more than enough to make that familiar structure feel fairly fresh and consistently fascinating. Part of this is because of the world building, but most of the credit goes to the characters. The main cast has some great characters in it, from the foul-mouthed and ridiculously dressed Kaine to the naive and completely adorable Emil, and the game isn't afraid to spend good chunks of dialogue and cutscene time developing them into interesting people with relatable conflict. The show stealer here, though, is the magical book, Grimoire Vice, and honestly, it's basically all because of his voice acting. He's a pompous, pretentious tome who remembers how incredible and important he is, but not exactly why, and it's an absolute joy to listen to his dialogue and interactions with the other characters. But what really sets Nier apart from a character perspective is that the main cast isn't the only group of people you come to know and care about. 
Through both side quests and the main plot, we come across other characters and scenarios that are compelling in their own right, and even factor into the main story in some emotional ways later on. I've seen games do this before, and even better, the Trails of Cold Steel games are probably the best example I've seen, but this is still pretty uncommon, and it made me feel way more connected to the world of Nier than a bunch of world-building exposition ever could have. The strangest thing I found about this game, however, is the English localization. Specifically, Nier was originally trying to save his sister, not his daughter. But in the process of localization, they decided that a father-daughter connection would connect more with Western audiences, which, yeah, maybe, but it's also one of the most common tropes in the medium, so I feel like it lost some of its unique identity with that change, and it makes it a little harder to look critically at it on a narrative level when the primary relationship of the cast is changed in such a dramatic way. That said, Nier works very well as an aging, world-weary father figure, and Jameson Price seems to have a penchant for those roles, so he does a great job. I have mixed feelings on that change in the end, but thankfully, it doesn't really impact enjoyment of the game or its story, just kind of annoys pretentious analytical types like myself. The biggest narrative flaw in Nier, in my opinion at least, is that you have to play the game multiple times to get all the ending information. Not even just a new game plus true ending situation either, the first playthrough lets you restart at a halfway point with more information and development for Kaine, and playing through the rest of the way gets you more information, more little cutscenes, and some more information in the ending itself. Then you have to do it again to get another ending, and do the same halfway new game plus all over again while completing all the side quests and fully upgrading every weapon for a fourth final ending. I understand what it's going for, but it's fairly long for its genre to begin with, and I don't have time to play through the same game four times just to find out what happens at the end. I had to look up the other endings on YouTube, which meant that I missed out on a lot of other interesting bits spread out throughout the game, and honestly, the rest of the ending content is so good I wish I was able to just see it all when I played through the game the first time. The canonical ending does something so meaningful, interesting, and decisively final that I really wish I had been able to make that decision myself instead of watching so someone else do it on YouTube to save 80 hours of gameplay that I didn't have time for. In the end, Nier is one of those games. It got generally positive but not spectacular reviews, and I feel like in a holistic sense the critical reception was pretty spot on. It's not a perfect game, both failing to reach its full potential in some ways and having some actual tangible annoyances that keep it from a perfect score. But it's also something legitimately special, something unique, and something worth more than the sum of its positive and negative traits. I feel like had I played Nier at an earlier point in my development as a gamer and critic, it could have had a radical effect on my understanding of video games as an art form. And that kind of special, unique game doesn't come around all that often. So when Games has led 101, Nier gets a B plus and a high recommendation.